Hi guys, Dan here, DSP Shop. Um, so, we're carrying on with our Ratty 57 Chevy, two-door hardtop, El Cheapo uh, kind of deal. And today was actually a pretty good day. Well, it should be a pretty good day. We have basically all the parts we need to get this thing basically together. So if you squint hard enough, it'll look like a car. After work, it was a pretty good score. Um, it did come with two extra doors, and I did pick those up. Unfortunately, um, well, fortunately, unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, I they came with two sets of doors. I believe these two doors were probably the doors that were with the car, and they're actually in pretty nice shape. And the guy started working on them and stripped this one all the way down to bare metal, which I guess you can pin how you want to look at it. Ultimately, this one will fit on the car and look just fine. This one is missing all of its latch mechanism and whatnot, so we'll have to deal with that. But fortunately, this one has all of it, so we can change that over. Uh, the doors that actually came with it are, are in fine shape. Um, I think the this one's a little bit of rot at the bottom. That's a door that was on it, that one. I think we'll probably put that back on. We're gonna switch this one real quick because I want the doors on it when we do the body swap. So we can align the doors uh, right now because they really shouldn't be coming off again unless we decide to change that one, but I think we'll just, we'll muck around until we got, line the doors up while it's on the body and it's kind of, the body's on the frame is happy. Then we have to go inside. I'm going old school, man. Light, I'm gonna worry about the flickering of LED and stuff. Ported, I don't know, I'm going backwards. So what we have to do, I have to continue to trim off the floor. So, you know, basically right where the tunnel is, go side to side. And at the back here, I don't quite know where I'm gonna cut. That is the real decision maker. Obviously we wanna, we're gonna have to cut the wheel tubs out anyways. Uh, I did get the floor panel, I'll show you just in a second. It actually goes all the way up and over, but this is all good metal. At this point, everything back is good metal. I think what I'm gonna do is probably slice it in and around right there. And just seam weld it the whole way across, seam seal it, and it'll be fine. Um, I think that'll be the easiest for me. So this is the floor pan. Um, a lot of people are asking where I get it from. So I get it from a local guy, uh, Walker Auto. They, uh, they're great. I've been buying stuff off him since my old man was taking me there. So I do get a bit of a discount, but you know, you go somewhere for 20 plus years uh, regularly, and uh, that's what happens. So anyways, if you guys are looking for stuff, hit him up. I don't know if he can hook you up across Canada or whatever, if he wants to deal with any of that or shipping, but if you're local, you, you already go there. <laughs> anyways, so again, this pan, as you can see, it'll join right at the front, which is good. I got to fold this down just a little. We will have to prep this pan uh, before it goes in. I'll show you how to do that. We'll have to grind the, all the weld points, you know, knock some holes in it for the, for the welds. And this is an actual hard top uh, pan. So it's got a few extra little pieces and uh, it's got some extra bracing in there as well. But you can see it goes all the way up. So we'll be cutting it, you know, somewhere in this region. All these braces, this is, this is the problem with Tri-5 Chevrolets. So they always rot out the floor pans and they do sell the pan and it's a pretty simple pan to put in. They sell them in, I believe sections. So it'd be one, two, three, four. So there's eight. I don't know if they have the tunnel or not. And then they also have it where you can buy just the top of the pan with no bracing in halves, which is also fine. But then you guys screw around with all these braces and you start piecing those together becomes a nightmare. This brace is always rotten. This one's rotten. These ones kind of do okay. And this one always rots this little bulbous piece. So by the time you start patching it together with patch panels and makeshift braces and all that, it's a bit of a hassle. And try fives. The frame rails don't run on the outside, like more, you know, 70s style muscle cars. They ride inboard. So that in that, there's little outriggers and the frame runs down the center. As you can see. So the frame, you know, there's an outrigger, there's one right there. Same deal. So tri-fives are a little goofy. 
but such is life. So in my mind, it is not cheap to buy this pan, but I actually think it's the cheapest way to do it, especially the situation we were running into, because we would need to buy three or four pans at let's say 50 or $60 each at least, plus the bracing, we'd be six, $700 at a minimum. And then you're now welding together all these patch panels is a freaking nightmare. And you end up with this patch quilt look versus this, <laughs> which will be the nicest part of the car that no one will ever see. Anyway, that's the plan for the day or this video, I should say, I don't know what today, it's already nighttime. Um, I'm gonna hang this door properly. I'm gonna hang the other one, line those up so we're as sturdy as we can be. I'm then gonna hop in here and we're gonna zip cut everything as nicely as we possibly can. Get it kind of prepped. We gotta bring the engine crane over, take the front clip off, hoist this body up and I'll show you. That panel slide right in. So to be another, you know, one man operation with no special tools, I will use an engine crane, but you could probably use floor jacks or uh, you know, a, a chain hoist or whatever you got. You can figure this out. Okay, a little bit of screwing around later. Got the blue door on, gap. It's a little high there, but not but it's actually tight down there. It might need a little bit of adjustment, but good enough for me. Um, I decided to put the door that we originally had on this side on. I just did a little bit better job lining it up. Obviously, can't really lock the fender because it's missing a bunch of pieces, but the back is pretty close. The door actually has the twist slightly, which would be done at the hinges, but really it's not too bad. And then same thing. I mean, considering what we're working with, it's uh, as good as it's going to be. So now I'm going to pop in here, start hating my life, um, trimming out all the stuff we don't need, getting all the junk out of the inner rockers, cut all the way across here. I'll probably use a zip disc for most of that. Uh, we might get the plasma out but I definitely think it's gonna be just ugly, ugly work. There's no real way to put it, which that is the unfortunate part of a full floor. You have to get the old floor out. So this one, usually when I do them, they're really, really, really bad. So they almost just kind of fall apart. This one was unfortunately, like I said, in pretty good shape other than they cut a bunch of pieces out, which was like the whole theme of this car. So, hey, leftover parts. What can I say? Look at that. Come on, 
For how this car was and the mismatch, hodgepodge, everything, miscellaneous chassis, not even bolted down, we're in the ballpark. All this can be fixed if the slot some holes or you know some shims or floor jack crank it up. It'll be good. And we can also we might change the door. Like I said, this is I believe it's a Pontiac door or maybe it's like a '56 Chevrolet door with the dual uh, kind of trim like that. And obviously a '57 would we'll just have it straight across, but. It's got a vibe. Ooh, can't get far enough back. It's kind of kind of dumb with the, the fender on this side. We got all sorts of junk on it, of course. And the quarter panel's not done, but it is what it is. It's a lot better than it was. So let's get all the cut up in here. 15 batteries, 15 uh, zip disks later. Just fine. Okay, so the floor is. Oh, it's going to unbolt that brace, but we got everything cleaned up across there. All the inner rockers are taken care of. I trimmed just a little bit of this brace off just so I can get in there real easy. And uh, ultimately, we're going to have to grind the floor, so we kind of have to move it to re-weld it anyways. So, yeah, do that. Um, I kind of blindly cut there. So, what I'll probably do is you can see where the that cut is maybe four or five inches away from that that bottom brace so we'll just do the measurement and we'll kind of cut that a couple inches so it'll overlap maybe two inches then we can do the same kind of welding we're doing the quarters you know kind of butt welding together um this lower rocker is junk obviously that side's kind of miscellaneous there's a lot of we got to get the floor in bolt it down and then i've done it many times before where you'll bolt the floor in and then you kind of got to get like a floor jack and like a two by four or four by four and put it you know, under the rocker and lift it up here, put it down there just to kind of get everything squared to it and then uh, and bolt it up. But I mean, again, considering the door's still open and closed with how little structure there is in this thing, it'll all be adjustable and nothing is going to be, you know, final welded. So I urge you guys, if you are doing this, everything is just tacked into place right now. We can take anything off without a whole lot of work and you know move everything a 16th or an eighth of an inch and uh, that gives you a lot of adjustability so don't be panicked if the first panel you put on isn't working or something like that when a car's coming this far apart I mean a lot of guys would be bracing this thing to the nth degree and having it on a rotisserie and all these things this works just fine by the end of it the floor will be in it'll be strong we'll just weld until we feel like it's sturdy and we'll be golden now what we have to do is prep this floor so we're gonna set the time-lapse camera up but ultimately what's happening is this floor from this edge to the other edge is actually gonna sit inside those rockers so the rocker this is the bottom side but the, the lower rocker they have to be welded together so the way that's gonna work is yeah we'll do it from the inside out so we'll stamp a hole in this with this little punch machine this is my old man's but we you know we store it here you know so we'll click this in there cha chunk cha chunk and it'll punch a bunch of little holes you can use a drill bit whatever you want and then this section here will be clamped against that another piece of metal with all the junk everywhere look at this so you have to pretend this section right here will be the rocker if i can get it to work so if they're sandwiched like this is actually perfect. So if they're sandwiched like that, and see there's a little hole there. If you weld that hole through, it'll attach it. So we're gonna be doing that, but the other way. So we'll be going this way to the rocker. So to clean that up with the grinder. So it's got some bare metal in it, chunk it, and that'll be fine. The front here, I probably won't do much. Usually I do dress. The front on the top side but because the tow boards have been cut out it's kind of irrelevant i might grind just the trans tunnel before i dump it in there but eh, it's not really too big of a deal and then the back will zip it and cut it i mean it's a pretty simple deal so let's set the camera up i'll try and kind of i might move these doors over here and set the the panel up against there so it's easier for me to work on and uh kind of go from there so you know, six hours later, this will be in. It's already, I think, 9, 30, 10 o'clock, but I'm going to keep giving her. I'd like to get the floor pan just set in tonight. I think that'll be, I won't be able to sleep if I don't. That's just how my brain works. I'm an idiot. So uh, get Danny out here, hold the camera. 
As we wrestle it in there, we got to take the front clip off and drag the engine crane over, which kind of sucks, but whatever. Actually, we have the Bobcat. Finagle the Bobcat in here might be easier. Ah, we'll use the engine crane. Sound girl, she's here, okay. So we got the floor. You know, sound girl has a name. <laughs> yeah, I'd say it, but. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, we got this thing all dialed together. I punched a bunch of holes in it. It's good enough. Uh, I did, I forgot what I did last time. I put all the mounts in it. I don't know if they'll last or if they get all banged up when I roll it in, but either way, there, there's enough there. Got the front clip off the old girl and uh, chain going to the uh, firewall. This garage is kind of tight. Used to, I, I have, but I'm used to being in the uh, slightly larger shop for a husky gentleman <laughs> with the balloon seat. So I've taken all, well, I think I've taken all the mounts out that I had in it and then what's left is just the two body mounts right the very far back in the trunk so in theory it should lift the front up it'll tilt we're gonna like can opener this thing the back will just kind of hold it in place we'll slide the floor in slide it in and then uh, drop it back down and I think that's where I'm gonna kind of leave it tonight because honestly, I'm tired. And Danielle made ziti. I'm not a pasta guy, but I want a second helping of it before I go right to bed. Is that super good for you? I heard a bunch of noodles. And right, cheese. Right before bed. Now, this is the same deal as when you're doing any sort of body swap or whatever. It looks sketchy. Because it is, but as long as you're not under the car, okay, you wait till it makes a noise and then you stop. Kind of looks like just doing a wheelie. Oh, it's tight. <laughs> We've done a lot of this little garage. I think we're going to get a record. Most amount of buffoonery out of a most body swaps done in this thing. 20 by 22. Okay. Sorry for the noise. Uh, you're, you're in my way. Well, do you want a good shot or do you want me out of the way? You are in the no light zone. <laughs> Do you want me to help? No. Push the car back? Well, that's not going to work out. Hang on. Let's rethink this. What can we do here? Oh, 
going bad. I can feel it going bad. Well, it's heavy and awkward. It's gonna smash, but if I know it, it won't be a big deal. It's fine. Okay. Don't knock over the heater full of diesel. Oh. That's I, good for your tinnitus. My brain feels itchy from that one. <laughs> okay. 10 o'clock at night. What else would you be doing? Whew. Oh. So now, oh, come on. What are we coming? Everything. Well, unfortunately, the pushing on the wheels makes it want to roll back. Just kind of. Get a block. Kind of sketchy. Well, I think metal and rubber. It's not going to slide. Installed. What are we <laughs> Actually, it's got to come ahead a little bit. So we can jam it above the, the back there as we lower it. Whew. Okay. Full speed. How did I do it before with the, with the floor above it? Think this door will open? Okay. Pretty sturdy. This is sketchy. Eh. Eh. That's not what I wanted. I need a bar. So I gotta get the floor on top of the old floor is my real issue here. You may have to lower it and just mangle. I'm on it. I'm pretty impressed how tough the thing is with the uh, fact that the door still opens. Just testament to how uh, I welded it, right? Right. That might be a little too much. Now at least we can be around it and it's not, it can't really fall too, too much. What can I, oh, maybe I'll do it underneath. In the safety zone. There we go, come on. Oh, what's it hitting? Oh, you bugger. What the, oh. Do you, do you see what this is hitting at all? Other than everything? Not on this Come on. Oh, you. Oh, oh it's stuck kind of under it. So. Oh, it's hitting the braces. Hmm. Oh, I got a plan. This will be foolproof, actually. Block of wood in there. That's what we need right here. This is going to fix all of our problems. What? What jacket? Oh. There's some 
questionable items on it. Such as? Mouse poop. No. Was there mouse poop? I don't know any in this thing even. Well, maybe it's just dirt. I'm pretty sure it's just dirt. There is a mouse nest in here though, I just saw that. Okay. There we go. Those are all good noises. The trick is to get a little frustrated. There. That's what we wanted. Just like that. A little hoofing. Come on. How are you not more impressed that the door just shut so nice? I'm very impressed. Impressed or shocked? Yes. Where did I put that bar? I feel like we're gonna need it again. We're like two tack welds away from this being like a legitimate car again. Okay, I'm tired. Well, that's not quite right. Should be okay. Okay-ish. There's not much floor left for it to hit on. There we go. Okay. Friggin' tired. So now, we'll finish this up tomorrow, but the floor, the floor's basically in. Look at this fancy light. So now what we have to do, actually it's not bad. Look at that bar. Here, I need the bar. So all you do now, we can do it kind of close, but jam a bar in. That hole's lined up. And there's one at the front here. Oh, that's actually lined up too. So basically the floor is kind of lined up-ish. We got to pry on the tunnel just a little. So that lips over. But as you can see, we're, well, you know what, on the door. So this is what I was saying now. So the body is hanging down a little right here. So the floor is in. So we'll, the, the floor is sitting on all the mounts. So it's at the right height. All we gotta do is put a floor jack and a block of wood under this. We'll slowly but surely kind of lift the body up to it, clamp it, tack it. That's how it's gonna be. Did you show them the fancy new light? I said, I think I said it went old school. Incandescent bulb and everything, yeah. Okay. I want some pasta. We'll be back at it tomorrow. That was a, that was a good one. <laughs> Sketchiness. Did you get a good thumbnail? Sure you did. Okay. See you tomorrow. I did get a good thumbnail. <laughs> Bye. Okay, so it is the next day, and I've had a little bit of time to recoup and think about a plan. Now, there's a lot going on when we're putting this in there, and I think maybe I don't I think I misspoke, but I want to make real clear where we're at immediately. So. The body is still sitting on top of the floor there. So what I'm gonna do actually is just clean up the body part of it, the uh, the green or blue, drill a few holes in it. Then when I sink it down, we'll just be able to spot weld that in. So that'll be very easy, clamp together, uh, line it up so it's flush and we're good. Now in the door here, how nice this opens. Come on. Um, I said we're gonna have to lift the body up to the floor which is probably gonna be the case, but obviously right now, the body is being jacked up by the floor, and then at the back here, the floor is sitting on top of the original floor. So the, the new black floor is absolutely not where it's gonna be yet. It's, good, it's doing kind of one of these, and it's got a little bit of you know funkiness to it. So that all has to kind of be adjusted first before we're jacking stuff up and going all together. So just 
be aware of those things. The first thing I'm going to do, clean all that up, force the floor back so where it's going to be, uh, you know, maybe put a tackle or two or vice grip it, make sure all the holes are all lining up in the front, and then we'll start trimming out the back until it fits flush. Then once that's flush, essentially the floor will be attached to the old floor, so that'll be flat. At the front here, it'll be round and, you know, flat and all that, so we should be good. The floor from the firewall to here will be okay. Now we may have some sag or some lift or whatever in this section, and that's what we'll have to adjust with a floor jack or a hammer or a big bar or whatever, but come on. Come on, that's not bad. So that's the plan for the rest of the day. Get the floor kind of tacked in, not fully in, but tack, tack all the way around. And then uh, I think we're good. I want to get a lot of this car together before we full weld everything. Because it's a lot easier to just, you know, grind or drill out a tack weld. So let's get set up on the front. Have a good day. Okay, so super simple. Uh, I got my holes drilled, just popped the floor head. It lined up. We put nuts and bolts in the front, everything lined up there. I put uh, nuts and bolts there on the other side. So that lines up. Obviously we're tight on the tunnel, so that's good. Back here, nut and bolt with a body bushing. I didn't do that side yet, but you can see. So here, forward, we're all lined up uh, kind of this way, or at least there's enough adjustment we can screw around in the mount. We are curving upwards, so we gotta trim that out. Um, this here has immediately kind of come closer. We're half inch out. So all I have to do is simply put a floor jack under this, lift it up, and I think we'll give, you know, it might just, you know, seam weld or do it, or just to hold it on both front sides as well as the tunnel. So we're gonna start the tunnel first, weld, weld, loop back here, weld, weld. So it's locked into place and we're happy with it. Going to keep everything from moving, then I'll line the back up. And then here, as you can see, we're clearly like, put my fingers right under it. We have a lot of flex there. Um, and this is where the, you can see actually where the wheel tub would have been right there. So we got to zip all that out. So I'll get that welded up and we'll come back and start kind of welding in here and doing whatever we got to do. But it should go pretty quick. So front's all dialed together. Uh, honestly, the doors open and close even better now. Like, look at that. As long as the doors open and close, I'm happy. Now, this side we have a lot more curvature. I think it's just jacked up in the back here. The line where I cut this thing, it did kind of one of those, so it fits better on that side. But real easy. We have all sorts of strength. Oh, I can sit on this. Uh, we got some plug welds on the side, and I weld the top. People always give me attitude about welding the, the seams together. It's not as strong. Eh. I do plug welds and I do a little bit on top. I've yet to have the floor fall out from under me, so I'm going to call it a win. We have that. I mean, that's pretty much as a link as it's going to get. I'll go on the other side real quick here. This side fits much nicer, but you just got to kind of slow and steady. And again, this can all be cut back out. So ugh. we still have all of our bolt, you know, bolts are lined up. But look at this. It's pretty much right where it should be. So all you do is you know play with a floor jack and a block of wood and you get it where you want it, clamp it in place. And see what it wants to do, it wants to separate there a little. So you give her one of those, weld it, it, ain't going nowhere. Keep opening and closing the door, you should be fine. But now, since we're lined up at the front, it's got, like this side's not that bad really, we got a half an inch to lift the body up. 
that side has a fair bit more but it could be jacked up on something there i don't know yet so i'll we'll have to get in there with the bar so a bar is your friend kind of work it back and forth let it sit down obviously kind of keep keep looking make sure whatever your your bolt holes are are a little bit out there but not bad so kind of you know get it all kind of lined up and kind of keep going pretty simple um what we gotta do on this side i guess yeah i think what the big thing's holding us up we got to just zip off some material the back of the 40 far down i just don't want to go too far in because then you know the old metal structure she ain't working I'll set the camera up, I'll pop in there, we'll get it kind of buzzed down, it'll fall into place, and we should be pretty good. Um, the one thing I actually have to do, what I haven't done yet, is to see right there and right there, there's these uh, captured nuts. Below there has to be body mounts. So I have to put um, two mounts there real quick, just so the back of the body is also on a mount. Because otherwise, if we don't do that, the floor will be kind of, you know, meet at a funny angle. So I'm going to do that real quick, get set up in here, we'll start cutting. This thing dialed together, but looks so much better. And I mean, you know, it's not cheap. I realize that. But the screw around factor, so much lower. What's your time worth? Okay, so we just kind of got it scabbed into place. Now, these floor pans, this is one thing I guess I should have said. If you go all the way to the back, you definitely kind of have a, I guess, a better fit, if you want to call it. The tunnel, if you can see here, it starts here and ends there. So I lined up the one side, but it'd be kind of obvious you can see this line in the light. So it's, a, you know, an inch, you know, kind of rounder, whatever you want to call it. And then these little whatever kind of crimped in things so if you see like they're only as wide as my finger and then kind of curve up or if you go up to this one it's quite a bit wider before it curves up so i kind of center them up best i can we'll smack them down with a hammer but you can see here this section here lines up nice on both sides and realistically if you were doing this and you had wheel tubs you would line up your wheel tub as well but we're lined up based on the rockers and, you know so it is what it is i mean that's bolted down you know we got the bar in there which is holding the floor straight so at a certain point well, it's like are you afraid of the dark at a certain point you just got to kind of accept what it's going to be and this is going to be under the back seat that no one's ever going to see and it'll be strong everything lines up we're golden so that's tacked in we're going to leave that there and we're going to go focus on uh bringing the body up to the rest of the floor get that tacked in maybe we'll do in some toe patches real quick just get those tacked in as well and bolt her all down make sure the doors still open and close fenders fit all those things call the video okay camera lady got sound so we got the floor tacked in i'm just going to do the the rockers now so i figured i'd have danny show us the one side now this side laid down almost perfect you want to get in here so that the black is the floor and that's the rocker like we're i mean very minimal out we can probably almost just give her a push but so that's that side which i'm pretty happy with now the other side we gotta go there watch where you're going gentle gentle 
it needs a little bit of love, but every little thing you do, stuff starts lining up just that much more. Oh, that's mellow, as far as I'm concerned. So we have our jack and a block of wood. You want to make sure the block of wood is under the outer rocker, because if you get the inner rocker, you're going to start lifting the floor up, right? So we'll just kind of, how do I have this? Let's get under it a little. It gets a little sketch, but here you can get in there. I'll just give her a couple of cranks. So that's actually I might have gone a little too much. Mm -hmm. So that's not too bad there. So we'll just grab it with a pair of ice grips. Snap that in. I have to go up just a little bit up here too. Maybe I should have started at the front. Ah. This might just adjust the back as we need. Well, that's pretty darn close. Grab the vice grips on the other side. Real quick. I see the vice grips. You can, you can stay over there in the, in the fall free zone. So we're just gonna do this and double check it real quick. I think we should be mint. So we're pretty well lined up. So now we can take the pressure off. Kind of hold up. Oh, we're hitting the vice grip. The door still shuts, so that's a win. Crank up the welder real quick here. We'll just give it a couple of buzzes. And that's all we're gonna do. So, this side's easy. The other side will be even easier. Oh, a little welder. What a gas? Did I turn the gas off like an idiot? What's going on here? Are we out of gas? Okay, well, we're gonna weld this without gas. So the welds are already bad, now they're extra bad. Oh yeah, there we go. So, let me get vice, device grip it. And she's pretty much mint. Come on, check this door out, look at this fitment. She ain't bad. Ooh, ooh. It's a little gappy at the top. That's a nice fit though. Hmm? Considering this car, at some point, every single piece of the center has been cut out of it. Frames been changed, doors are miscellaneous, like, not bad. So, I will finish off the other side. I guess I gotta change the bottle here real quick. And then uh, we'll do some tow boards. And I'm gonna call it pretty good, but we got ourselves a pretty sturdy whoop. Trap off Chevrolet. Huh? Eh? Huh? Eh? Buy a full floor pad, do it at home like an idiot. It's really not that hard. We're back. So I got the floors all kind of welded in, tacked in, so I'm pretty happy with it. it ain't going nowhere. Doors still open and close. Uh, you know, it's getting it's sturdier. Needs needs a little bit yet. The the brace right there isn't put well that one right there has to be done but whatever anyway so we're gonna tow boards here so as you can see they're missing they do sell this panel but it's not there's not enough to uh justify needing it so i did i used this uh in the summertime i did a course at the half-ass brents and uh jap hands doing some metal fab and all that and they were showing different ways of doing things and and you know a lot of it was really custom 
you know, metal work and all that. But realistically, it works good for floors. So I taped up a piece of butcher paper and, or, or mask paper, whatever you call it. And I kind of cut it to about the shape I want. I then just ran my finger on there with some dirt. So I'll cut that. I may leave it like a inch longer here so I can fold it and fit it in. So it'll sandwich, or we may just weld it this way. But we're gonna cut this out. It should be pretty simple panel other than where it goes up in the tunnel. We might have to get a little a little uh, custom with it. So we'll see. We may uh, run it through the power hammer or whatever you want to call it there, a little plunging hammer. If it needs a little bit of bend, if I can't to get it by hand. And then, yeah, fold it over in the brake maybe or just with a wrench. And we'll see. So I'm going to cut this panel out, transfer it, and uh, put on some metal and see what we end up with. So there you go, the little... Ah, you guys are right in the way here. Little patch panels in there. Looks pretty mint. I might kick you a few times. Um, I was thinking about running this end through the plenishing hammer, but I think honestly, I'm just gonna smash it in there and it'll be what it's gonna be. So same thing, we'll get her kinda started in there, but it's not too bad. And this section, on the car didn't have any ribs or anything in it. There's this little cross pattern, which maybe went down to about there. So we can weld that in, then just smash a little bit in for a little bit of strength. But I don't think it's gonna be fine. And uh, I decided not to roll it over, mostly out of laziness, but I'm thinking it'll be, it'll be fine. There she is. It's in there. It needs uh, a little bit more welding and maybe a little bit more grinding, but it's in there. I didn't get the corner yet. I got to do all the, the rocker and whatnot. And then here, we got to smash her down, but now it's all welded. We can probably just get her a little backside of a hammer, a little ball peen, give it a nice little thing, and it'll be uh, perfect. It's not oil candy or nothing. And uh, I don't know, whatever. Seam sealer fixes lots, right? We got set up to the other side real quick. I might just tack that side in, <coughs> honestly, because I'm a combination of tired, lazy, and hungry. But uh, if I go in now and eat till I'm sick, I know I won't come out and finish that. So uh, I might do a little bit more trimming. It's still a little soft on the upper edge, but not too bad. We'll get that dialed together and see if we can maybe just use this pattern upside down. That'd be sweet. Otherwise, we'll make a new one. So let's get after it.
Well, the other side's in. Uh, I didn't go nearly as hard as that. It's just kind of tacked in, just mostly out of uh, laziness and hunger. But realistically, we got it all kind of together. There has been a lot of work in this car in the last five days, maybe. Uh, five or six, I don't know how many hours I have in it, but a lot. And all the rust has been cut out, new stuff's tacked in, obviously. We're going to have to deal with that panel there. And there is still a, like, miles and miles and miles of welding to be done in this. Um, across the back, obviously, rockers got to be, you know, permanently done. The quarters, we got to do both those, get them in properly. Tail pan needs a little bit of love. Uh... Uh, all the bracing like there's still lots and lots and lots to do but i think for my own brain i'm going to take a bit of a break from the ugly rust and all that work because it's been a lot and we're going to focus on some more mechanical stuff but floor pan is in you know anybody can do it i mean we used a, an engine crane you know a few friends and some four by four blocks and jack stands or a bobcat a gantry anything you have can make this happen and don't worry if it's all twisted up and stuff you just take your time Get it all together, tack it, make sure the door's open and close, make sure it looks straight, you're fine. If you're working on a car that's this beat up, I assume you probably have a few skills and a little bit of brains. So shut all that off and it'll be just fine. Um, yeah, I do have, last night I picked up the motor for this. She might be a little stuck, but we'll see if we can break that loose. Because um, I'd like to get that running on a pallet or on the ground before we put it in if we can. If that doesn't work out, we'll go to plan B, C, or D. Uh, and I have all the front end work, the control arms and spindles and all that sort of stuff. So I think I might check that motor out first and just see what kind of shape it is in. If we get it running, bolt it up to a transmission, be able to slide that in there. And uh, But before we do that, we'll do the front end and the brakes and all that. Because I really think if that motor is good, which big if, but the price was zero, so you can't complain. Uh, we should be able to, another week from now, you know, motor trans in, front end dialed, front clip on, like it'll be like a car, um, and go from there. You guys all must love it. There's no glass in here, so other in the back window, but uh, all the welding and grinding I'm doing, I'm not tearing all that up. And then what's left, wheel tubs, the trunk, and uh, this section back here on both sides. Obviously, I haven't welded, it needs a little bit of rust repair, and you know, gaps like this that we're all rotten away but that's kind of easy to get in there you know goober it all in you know buzz it and then uh, a little bit of seam sealer no one's ever going to see it and really it's not structural at that point so we're just trying to keep the exhaust gases out burnouts and all that right thank you so much for watching i hope you guys are still enjoying this video it's been a pile or this uh, series i should say it has been a pile of work and uh yeah subscribe below if you wouldn't mind it's saturday so we're trying to go live on the other channels. Danny's running his more smooth DD Speed Shop. And it's kind of behind the scenes and we do lives and stuff like that. So if you want to tune into that, I would recommend searching it out or uh, being around on a Saturday night. That's it for me. I'll see you on the next one.